Hello. Thank you for enrolling in EMDV 8013, Development and Environment in the Anthropocene, this master's course. I'm your course convener. My name is Kuntala, Kuntala Lahiri Dutt. I'm a professor of resource, environment and development program in Crawford School of Public Policy at the Australian National University. I'm so glad that you have taken this course. Welcome. Let me introduce a little bit uh, myself and my work and uh, the impact it has had over the years. As you can see, often the subject of development come from a developing country myself, and I have seen how development agencies have thought about water resources, for example, elements of the environment as pure resources and brought about very large scale projects such as harnessing rivers, you know, controlling and regulating waters of rivers and created havoc in the lives of riverine communities. I have firsthand seen and experienced and carried out research on ex extractive industries, very large projects in India, but also in Indonesia, in Africa, and in Latin America, where I have seen how people's lives have been destroyed by these large scale extractive projects. So the one point that we will raise in this course time and again is what is meant by development if it does not benefit everyone in the same way. And the question that we will ask is also, is this development sustainable? Can we carry on doing this? Are we not at a tipping point already? Now that brings us to the idea of the environment. Now everything that we do has an impact on the environment. We change the environment just by being part of it, by using it. And what is environmental knowledge? What is seen as the environment is also varied and diverse. Over decades, our sustainability science has come to dominate the way we think about the environment. So we call it the mainstream sustainability science, it's, but it's just a one way amongst the very many diverse ways of knowing about the environment and we call it epistemologies. So in this course, you will get exposed to these many ways of knowing about the environment, thinking about the environment, and that will be one of your important take-home lessons. Why I say that? Because that is the way I have looked at the environment and that work has been valuable for international environmental agencies, development agencies, such as the United Nations Environment Program. When they set up the International Resource Panel, which is sort of equivalent of IPCC, but not governmental, driven by research scholarship, they set up the Extractive Industries Governance Group to come out with a document that will kind of create the overarching rules for how to govern extractive industries in this world. Not to treat the environment as any more as resources that we extract. International Resource Panel hired me to write two chapters in that report that is on United Nations Environment Programs website. Similarly, I have contributed my research reports to Australian Council for International Agricultural Research, Australian DFAT, as well as the World Bank. Particularly, my contribution to thinking about 
coal sector transition in developing countries has been useful to them. Remember that besides development and environment, the course also has the word Anthropocene in its title. Now, what is Anthropocene? Anthropocene is a highly debated, highly contested concept. Anthropocene is seen as a ge almost a geological era, a period in the hu entire history of the earth when human be beings have become so powerful, homo sapiens have become so powerful as to be able to control and destroy the environment like never before. So human power, human power in dominating all other species over the earth, its terrains, its land and its waters and its flora and fauna, everything, that is the characteristic feature of the Anthropocene. Now, some scholars say that let us wait and see. Does not Anthropocene ma begin with the extensive use of capital by human society? So they call it a capitalocene. Industrial revolution marked this massive industrial scale production that has led to us seeing the large-scale development projects as seeing the way of economic growth, fast economic, rapid economic growth, the limitless growth that is ingrained in this thinking and that has caused destruction to the environment. There are quite a few others who do not believe that that environment, Anthropocene and Capitalocene are synonymous. They feel that human beings started to impact and start on the environment ever since they formed groups and learned to collaborate and became more and more intelligent and more and more powerful than other species that live on this earth. We will go through in this course through all these debates, critical debates about development, critical debates about the environment and about the Anthropocene. And you, we will also talk about what can be done, what can we do now? Have we not reached a tipping point already? Are we not causing enough dis devastation, catastrophic disasters around ourselves through the very processes of development, let's go into the course and see, explore it more and see what exciting things are waiting for you to take home with. Remember that as we go through the course, we want to remain inclusive. We want to make this a level playing field, a platform for discussion. So we are all equals in this course, including me. I will be learning with you as we move on through this course. One of the interesting exercises that I have for you in this course, I call it a scenario exercise. Basically, the scenario exercise is a development project that's coming into uh, a very rural, resource-dependent then community and I will divide you students into various groups, interest groups in which you will have to make your case, argue with each other and see how conflict operates in real life in real time. One last thing, I would like you to come to the class after listening to my pre-recorded lectures. I promise that I will try to keep them short and sweet. And at least after reading the core reading, 
and if I upload the PowerPoint presentation, go through it just in case you have not understood anything that I have said in that lecture. So when you come to the class, let us discuss. Come with your questions, come with your comments, and let's make the class an exciting and interactive place of discussion rather than me talking to you, giving you, filling you up with information. Finally, I repeat my thanks to you and I want to say that I look forward to being your course convener for the duration of this semester. And I'm hoping that this will be a very exciting and interesting semester for all of us. Let's begin.